But I always feel when we come out of that thing, it's like the night at the Roxbury. You, you, me, me. Sounds good. You know, this is a recorded episode, so that's not even going to be on there, Mario. All right. You want to open it? <laughs> you want me to open it? <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry. Had a moment. Welcome to Hashtag Sports, everybody. Uh, I am Paul. That is Mario. Hey, I did the weatherman thing this time. Uh, welcome to Hashtag Sports. We haven't recorded some content uh, talking about a Bills game that's about to happen in quite some time. We were uh, talking a lot of smack about Baltimore and uh, figured, why not? Let's record a Bills episode, too. And uh, we thank you for being here. And uh, if you like the content, go ahead and smash that like button. Uh, leave a comment. I I read every single one of them, and I do reply as to as many as possible. Go ahead and subscribe. We're talking Bills all the time here and talking NFL and NFL betting. So come join uh, Come join Hashtag Nation. Joined by Mario, and we're going to talk about the Bills because things changed last week, Mar. Bills added Amari Cooper, and instantly, like a shot in the arm, like Frank the Tank in old school, <laughs> we're going straight again! <laughs> Woo! All of a sudden, there was life in this Bills offense, and it yeah. was with a player who is getting his routes from a rookie uh, on check plays. So, pretty sweet. Pretty yeah. sweet situation. Shot in the arm, three straight three and outs. Such a shot. Such a shot. <laughs> no, I mean, but here's the thing. You had to, you, you have to temper expectations a lot of times. When, when, it, when your team that you cover or you talk about or that you may even like does something like this because it's not a very billsy move. You know what I mean? It is financially for yeah. Bean. You know what I mean? We talk about the off-field stuff, how his contract was worked out. Browns mm-hmm. planned on this for a long time. They planned on trading him. I think they were trying to trade him for Ayuk at one point, which is why they took so much salary in the beginning. You didn't see something like, oh, the Bills finally got on track offensively and Cooper had 10 catches for 172 yards and three touchdowns. You know what I mean? They got back on track and they were able to be very dominant albeit against a very poor team, but it has a very good defense. And he had four catches, 66 yards and a touch. And I think when you look at it in that aspect, that and him opening up Shakir on the other side to have a very also Shakir game, seven catches. What do you have, like over 50 or 60? Something like uh, that? Yeah, he went, uh, Shakir went against Tennessee seven for seven, 65 yards. Yeah, I mean, th- that stuff. Very productive game. It's very productive, but like people who read the stat sheet would be like, what? He, neither one of those guys had 100. How can you guys call that productive? They were moving the chains when they had to move the chains, guys. That's what those things right. are doing. That's what Cooper yeah. opens up for you. He opens up Kincaid underneath, too, to get those 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 pesky third and six downs when you don't really get what you need from your run game on first and second down. You get those first downs. You move the chains. You, it, it wears on the defense, so you're able to wear on that defense more in the second half. So, right. That all being considered, is this the path we're going down, Paul, with Amari Cooper? Is he going to be this five for 72 guy with who may have a touchdown here and there? Or mm. are we looking for bigger things out of Amari Cooper in this Bills offense? So here's what I think is really fascinating about Khalil Shakir. In 37 NFL games, he's only averaged below 10 yards a reception five times is he a target hog of course not right no. there's a lot there's a bunch of games where he's got one target for one reception for 13 yards right so the <laughs> stat sounds impressive right but the yeah. target numbers are not really there what really is impressive about Shakir is the targets to receptions might be the best in the NFL over the last three seasons he he simply catches every target you know, he's only mm-hmm. had so far this season one target that did not turn into a reception other than that Every target is a reception and the year prior is near identical to that. Right. So the problem is that of those five games where he's been averaging under 10 yards of reception, two of them are this season. Right. And we're pretty early into the season. And I think that's enough of a red flag to say, listen, we need to ensure that we're making our weapons as dangerous as possible. So, the whole everybody eats thing. I know people are going to bag on it. I get what the bills were doing. The bills were trying to bargain basement shop. You're hoping you splash with Keon, you know, like you're, you're hoping that MVS works out. You're hoping that Curtis Samuel works out and you just kind of like, they all just kind of laid there for the first half of the season. Yeah. And you go out, you get Cooper and it totally dynamically changes the offense. I think it makes Shakir a more dangerous weapon because he fits that possession receiver role 
And how often is it that you have a possession receiver as your number one, right? Like we, Cincinnati yeah. tried to do it with Tyler Boyd, you know, like yeah. and Corey, they tried to do it in Tennessee with Corey Davis, right? Those were possession guys. And I, like, don't get me wrong. I love Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward was a possession receiver. I was just going to say that, that you're, yeah. you're mentioning Heinz Ward in this, in this aspect. That's of I'm course. Saying. Right. But that was yeah. also a million football years ago, you know? So like <laughs> possession receivers is your number one is not a typical thing. And that's kind of the direction the bills were going. That's gone. Now you don't have to worry about that. Amari Cooper does not fit that role. The Cooper acquisition, completely opens up this offense and makes Shakir a much more dangerous weapon. I don't think it really impacts Dalton Kincaid as much as people are going to say. I think it probably helps the run game more than it helps like Dalton Kincaid or Mac Collins. I can't believe we're talking about Mac Collins in week eight of the NFL season, week seven or week eight of the NFL season. We're still talking about Mac Collins. But I got Mac Collins so much. Come on, dude. I know. I know. Come but he's, a, he's your typical Buffalo receiver that people could pull for. Oh, this guy was a special teams guy. He never had a, over this many targets. You know, he's a You're grinder. You're calling him a special... successful Duke Williams? Is that, what, is that what I'm hearing from you right now? Without the shoes, yes. Yes, he's, he's 100%. Okay. Uh, but, you know, in that respect, you, you talk about not opening up things really for, for Kincaid. I think it opens up more things. I think what it did was, more importantly than open up things for Kincaid, I think it closes the book on Knox because you're not going to see those double tight yeah. end sets anymore. You're right. not really going to do that. And albeit he's, Josh Allen's best friend. That's great. Ha build him, a, you know, build him a guest house in, in your home, Josh. <laughs> great. But as far as contracts that, yeah. I mean, every GM misses on contracts, but the only thing about Bean's contracts, and unfortunately Dawson Knox's kind of fits this mold, is that he built in a couple of voided years in the Dawson Knox's contract. Now, could he take it on the chin like he did with Stefan Diggs's contract. Absolutely. He could do that. I don't know if he wants right. to do it next year, but the year after right. that, obviously you're going to have a 30 year old Dawson Knox. You may, you may want to, you know, part ways with him because you're still going to have mean Dawson. 2026. Dal you mean yeah. 2026. Yeah. yeah. Don't you're still going to have Dalton Kincaid on a rookie deal at that point. And you're going to have to think about extending him as well. So I think it, that might be Josh Allen's new best friend, you know, <laughs> in, in this offense, but the point <laughs> <laughs> what we're trying to make here is that, yeah, you're you're right. It definitely does open up everything for our, for the Buffalo Bills offense because of not his speed, not his route running, his versatility. You could play him on the inside. You can play him on the outside. You can have different yeah. sets, run similar route patterns, route combinations with Amari Cooper, and you can put him inside. You put him anywhere. You put him in the backfield if you wanted to. You know what I mean? Okay. I wouldn't be surprised by week 10, you see Amari Cooper line up in the backfield, not even if the ball's going to him, just to give the defense a look, to be like, yeah, we could put him back here. You'll, you'll have to deal with it. You're going to spend 15 minutes of practice time this week going over if Mar if Amari Cooper lines up in the backfield. What are we going to do? Well, you know? that's what Dallas did. Dallas moved him all over the place because Absolutely. they and he were playing matchups. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. yeah, right. Which which was different than his time with the Raiders, right? The Raiders had him on the outside. That's what he did, you know. So Buffalo's yeah. going to be playing that X receiver role for now until they figure out exactly what they got in him. Like that's one thing about the NFL. Everybody knows every thing about every player but when you get them spikes in the grass that's yeah. when you learn about that player you see how fast they are you see how smooth they are through their cuts you see what their separation really looks like watching amari cooper kind of grow into this offense is going to i think change a lot of the problems that people have had with this bills offense now i say that as the bills had three consecutive three and outs and we've been complaining about the bills first half offense all season <laughs> however this is a maturation process i will say though that we do have a a running back controversy brewing. And I just want to put it out there. Ray Davis looks pretty good. I think it's the number, Mark. I think that's that Fred Jackson number. It's the ghost of Christmas past, man. Like, are you are you trying to stir up controversy yourself, Paul? Is this I don't what you're know, trying man. to do? I, I love what Ray Davis brings to that position when you need it. Because there's there's no Usually they would pick up a TJ Yeldon or Latavius Murray or, you know, some kind of right. a veteran that's a bigger back that you would want to try to get, you know, two or three yards. And he doesn't, you know, a lot of those guys never got those yards, you know, when they right. came in. What are you going to do? Give it to Reggie Gilliam? No, you're not. You're not going to give it to Reggie Gilliam. Ray Davis sure has that low center of gravity. I don't care who's in front of me. I'm getting this yardage. Instead of getting backs, you know, I always talk about all the time, you want to get backs that are similar enough that you don't have to change your offensive philosophy when one guy comes in. Because mm -hmm. you knew when Latavius came in, it was pass pro. He, right. he wasn't getting, he wasn't running the ball. You knew he wasn't. Right. Or, or he was going to run it and it was going to be straight up the middle of the field. Oh yeah, right? absolutely. Like, he was going to run right in the back of the guard. When you have a guy like Davis, 
as opposed to Cook, who brings a very dimmer, very dimmer, a very different skill set to the game, but can do all the things that you need in your offensive philosophy. Teams don't really know what to do. Defensive coordinators are smart, though. They'll find weaknesses. You know, they always do. When we've seen this Bills offense be most productive is when they start introducing new stuff. And Cooper is that. You were, you were right when you started the episode. He's that shot in the arm for this Bills team. Because you've got a wide receiver group that's out there trying to make themselves all better when none of them know how to be great yet. You look around, like it's not like it's a totally similar room from last year where they could say, listen, we could do it without Diggs here now. It's Shakir, yeah. that's who's still here. You know, like you had a massive yeah, exit that wide receiver too. Yeah, yeah, like they're, yeah. So again, not to say that you had to have leadership there. You know, that's what position coaches are for. That's what your quarterback is there for, is to help guide those things. But the truth of the matter is, you got Amari Cooper for free. So enjoy him while you have him, because he's playing for his next contract. Don't think that he's not. Don't think he's going to take a discount because Buffalo saved him from Cleveland. He chose to go to Cleveland because he didn't get enough money from Dallas. So let's, again, just put that on the table. Amari <laughs> Cooper's playing for free agency right now. And yeah. as a Bills fan, I'm thrilled about that, right? Oh, because yeah. You're going to get the Keon, best. His first 100-yard game is when Cooper's on the field. What does that tell you? It gives you the space that you needed in this passing. Because the first half of that Bills game against Tennessee, it didn't look like it was going to be a good day for that Bills offense. And then they, what, 34 unanswered points? You know, like yeah. Josh has his first 300-yard passing game of the season. More to come yeah. there. But uh, you can't help but love – the maturation of players into this offense right now again i think as bills fans we'd all love to see it across the entirety of the game so i guess my question to you is mar how long until amari cooper impacts the first half of bill's offense i think you see it versus the jekyll and hyde seahawks seahawks are, are, are an amazing team they have amazing talent but i don't think they found their identity as, as a team yet mm -hmm. and that's where buffalo i think has the seahawks i mean you talk about a seahawk team that beats Atlanta but loses to the Giants. You can't describe that in any other way other than Jekyll and Hyde. Kenneth Walker scares me a lot against I mean, against this against the Bills linebacker against the group. Bills you know rushing yeah. defense. So, but yeah. in that respect, you you then can go toe to toe now having Cooper instead of going into the half seventeen three or seventeen seven and getting you know run over by Kenneth Kenneth Walker. You can go into the halftime 21 17 mm -hmm. and getting the ball in the second half, or something like that. And right. you can still be like, okay, we made our adjustments. We're going to, we're going to roll in the second half. And then mm -hmm. with, with as young as a team as Seattle is, who knows? You know, I mean, you got, well, you got familiarity over there with Dodson. Wonder if they take advantage of that. Again, can't praise the uh, acquisition of Cooper enough from a timing perspective because you get him against oh, yeah. Tennessee, against Seattle against the Miami, against the Colts. So we're talking four games to get him into this offense before you play the Chiefs and then the 49ers. Don't wait. Get it done. I don't know if this deal happens at the timing that it did if Devonta Adams doesn't go to the Jets. But, yeah. I mean, the timing, from my perspective, is this was the ideal time to have made that trade, right? Absolutely. Regardless of whether Adam goes to the Jets or not, Cooper is still – uh, again, it was basically free. So uh, how he ended up on Buffalo is still beside me. It just, it feels like they made the move before teams were ready to make the move. And yeah. Cleveland clearly was in sell mode. Um, and yeah. uh, they might continue to be, right? Imagine the, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, with Miles Garrett, imagine the price tag yeah. on Cooper if Watson went down before he was traded. That's it what I mean, little, right? Puts a little different paint job on it. And, and sure with the Bills does. having it. An extra second round pick, they can deal a third. You know, they, they feel right. pretty comfortable in doing yeah. that, which is fine. Even if he keeps up the production that he had on Sunday, which four for 66 and a touch, I'll take that every day. I'll take that every single Sunday out of my receiver. You know what I mean? If he's right. opening, if he's opening Kincaid underneath, if he's opening Shakir underneath, then then those 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 receptions get get credited to him then. You know. Right. Right. I mean, I don't well, think it, Gabe Davis has that four touchdown day in Kansas City if Stephon Diggs isn't on the field. Oh, yeah, of course not. Right. You know what like, I mean? So that, yeah, that's the impact you're looking for. Yeah, that's the impact yeah. you're looking for. So Right. And and you're going to start seeing, you know, sort of the this whole everybody's going to get two targets thing. Um, that's going to start falling to the wayside. Well, 
It will. It's going to have to. Stop it's targeting Matt game. Collins and Dawson Knox on third downs, please. Hey, Dawson Knox, nine targets, five receptions on the season, and a tut. He did get a tutty. He does have a tut. On does have the, a the, the disappearing act when Allen uh, against the Jets, when he ducked in between <laughs> the lineman and the defender. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. Chaos, Josh. All right, so that's going to wrap it up here for us here at Hashtag Sports. Thanks again to Mr. Rogers Homes, our sponsor, Arizona's number one real estate agent. If you are in the home for, uh, or if you're looking for home in Arizona, income property, you're looking for a vacation home, uh, you don't feel like cutting the grass because they, they don't have real grass in Arizona, <laughs> uh, go and talk to Sean. Uh, his brochure is in the description of this video. Uh, we are Hashtag Sports. Again, if you like this kind of content, this is the stuff we do, that we do all the time. Is we, we laugh, we talk football, and we get on each other's nerves a little bit. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment. We'll talk to all you guys soon. Have a good one.